Take yourself to God and tell him so. Remember, we are created or were created for obedience. We failed at first creation and in Christ we are recreated for obedience. Tell the Lord you are ready to obey.
Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because you are teaching us the way of life, the way you want us to live for our good and for our eternal life. Definitely, we want to please you on earth, and we have understood to please you, we must regularly obey you. I'm praying that your children will understand the message and will file in for obedience to God and to his constituted authorities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are progressing now in our series on obedience. Today, we are considering areas of Christian obedience. Areas of Christian obedience. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 to 17. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 to verse 17. As obedient children, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but As he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Conversation is an old English word meaning in all manner of your life, in all ways of life. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judge it according to every man's conscience, every man's walk, rather, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Obedience is a spirit. When this spirit of obedience is in you, it will lead you into obedience in all areas of the Christian life. The Bible says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, in all areas of your Christian life, in all aspects, in all concerns of your Christian life. So, once you have come into Christ, you have entered into the realm of obedience. Obedience in all areas of your life. Here I'm going to bring out five areas that a Christian is expected to submit himself in obedience while living among men on earth. Of course, already we know he has entered into obedience with God. So I'm not counting that anymore. That your duty as a recreated being in Christ is obedience. Obedience to God is paramount. But as on earth, living among men, there are areas you are to exercise obedience. Yes. The reason for your obedience is because you are a child of God and have received 
commandment from God to walk according to his word and according to his ways in order to please him and avoid his displeasure. As obedient children, don't behave as you have been doing in the former life. In the former life, you had no regulator. In the former life, you had no fear. You lived as you wanted. But now, you have the, the, the great God. You have come to him. You have become a child of God. You have entered into a school of obedience. And there are subjects to be studied in this school of obedience and you're supposed to pass all of them in order to graduate to eternal life with God. So you are attentive. God says don't walk according to your former way of life as obedient children. Don't continue to live as when you were a sinner but now conduct yourself to serve God in holiness. Focus on God. Want to be like him in morality, in righteousness. Focus on him. Because it says, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, in all manner of your life. Be holy in your lifestyle. And holiness is obedience to God's word. Holiness, simple definition, is obedience to God's word. Of course, you know the book uh, God has given to us. Holiness is complete obedience and submission to God's word. That's definition of holiness. And that book is there. Try to get at it and go through it. You will understand this thing I am saying perfectly. Yes. Do not continue your former lifestyle when, when you didn't respect anybody. You didn't bother about anybody. You had no regard for the government. In fact, you had no regard for parents. You had no regard for a leader in the church. You had no regard for leadership in the church. You lived as you wanted. But now, don't go in that way anymore. Be conscious that you are engaged to God. You are betrothed to God. It's like a woman. Before she was married, she lived and dressed as she wanted. But now, there is a man you must live for, a husband, since you have gotten married to him. You must live to please him. You must live to satisfy him. You must submit yourself to the control of your husband in morality, in matters of righteousness and morality, not in matters of uh, evil and sin against God. So, the Bible says in verse 16, why am I asking you to be obedient, to be holy? Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. God is holy. So he wants you to be holy. He wants you to be holy. Your obedience to God is as a sweet-smelling odor, which not only God, but men around you also enjoy with thanks given to his name. Be righteous. Be holy. Be obedient in all aspects of life. You turn to the left, be obedient there. You turn to the right, be obedient there. You turn backward, be obedient there. You move forward, be obedient all round. Wherever you are, in any institution, in any union, in any fellowship, 
in any organization, living as a, as, as a citizen in your nation, as a stranger in another nation, all that God wants of you, be obedient. This will make people praise him in Matthew chapter 5. I read verse 14 to verse 16. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 uh, verse 14 to verse 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let's read verse 16 together. One, two, go. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let this life of obedience be known to all people wherever you are that they may see your good life and give praise to God. Joseph was with his father. He was a goodly boy, obedient to the father. Joseph was taken to Egypt, sold to Egypt. He was obedient to Potiphar who bought him and made him to serve him. Potiphar so enjoyed him that he left all things into his hand. Joseph was accused and taken to prison under the prison warder. There again, he submitted in obedience to the prison warder to the point he met him, the supervisor of the prisoners. Again, Joseph was taken from there to Pharaoh and he was obedient to Pharaoh until Pharaoh said, here is Joseph. Except in the throne am I greater than you. All Egypt is under you. So be, so, be obedient. I will tell you what, some, a, a story. But just to bring out the spirit of obedience. Because I said, obedience is a spirit. There was a man in my village. This man became angry with a lamb. Because he poured oil, uh, for, um, kerosene, into the lamp and lighted it. Unfortunately, the thread fell into the bottom of the lamp and it start, the, fire, the light started glowing in the, in the globe. He tried all his best to quench the fire. He was not able. He tried to with the lamp. He became angry. He started breaking the lamp. The fire didn't work. He carried it and threw it to the bush. It was burning there. He said, this is witchcraft. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is a fire. That's its nature. The trade has fallen into the, uh, the kerosene. And the kerosene is supplying the grace. It's burning. Do anything to it. Abuse it. It was burning. He carried something to heat and break the globe. It was still burning. He carried it and threw it into the bush. It was burning there. So, be, as obedient children, this should be your nature wherever you are, wherever you go to. So, that is the will of God unto you. Let your light shine. Let your obedience be known by all men wherever you are that they may see this good life of yours and give thanks to God. In Philippians chapter 4, I read verse 18. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. He said, but I have all. I have all. And abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, 
an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. You sent to me materials, gifts to support me. It's wonderful. Those things you sent in the name of the Lord is like a sweet smell. It goes to God as a sweet smell. It is an odor, sweet odor, fine to smell. It ascends unto God. And it's a good sacrifice that God accepts. It pleases God well. You brought it in the name of the Lord. It's a sweet odor. But as long as it is a smell, it permeates the environment. And other people, not only God, are smelling it too. It looks fine. Your obedience is to God. But others around, when they see your obedience, they are also benefiting from it. You are converted. Your obedience to God makes your father happy. Your mother happy. Your obedience to God makes everybody happy. Your husband happy. Your office happy. Because your life is not only sweet to God. It is sweet to those that are around. That smell that which comes out of you. A good smell. So, areas of obedience, number one. Children, obey your parents. Children, obey your parents. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Children, hear this. God is saying, obey your father and your mother. It will be well with you. You will live long on the earth. Yes, if you do this with full obedience to God, it will give you eternal life. You will make it to heaven. That is what the word is saying. Obey your mother. Obey your father. Don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn to your parents. Don't be like other children that mama, when their parents send them. Don't be like other children that even abuse their parents, abuse their mother, abuse their father. Don't be like those ones. Those are stubborn children. They can die at any time. And it shall not be well with them. Because of that character, they will never see God. But you be obedient to your father. Be obedient to your mother. Even in hard matters. Your father has right to send you. Your father has right to say, come, kneel down. And you kneel down. Your father has right to give you an instruction what you should do what you should not do listen to that that is what the Lord is saying in Proverbs chapter 4 Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 1 the Bible tells us Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 1 hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding for I give you good doctrine forsake, forsake ye not my law for I was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he taught me also and said unto me let thine heart retain my words keep my commandments and live 
Is this speaking like Ephesians chapter 6 that says that you will live long. Here is this saying, if you obey my words, you will live. The world is bad. The world is wicked. It will strangulate you. But if you listen to what your father is teaching you, listen to what your mother is teaching you, because what did he say here? I give you good doctrine. This agrees with Ephesians chapter 6 that obey your father or obey your parents in the Lord. I give you good doctrine. Obey your father or your parents in the Lord. Now, this is a clause that comes into it. What is obedience in the Lord? It is in all good matters. In all moral matters, in all righteous cause, where your father is telling you what is normal of life, what is not going to destroy you, what is not going to doom you. Your father is telling you about normal life. Child, wake up. I want you to wake up every 6 a.m. That is good. There's nothing wrong about that. Obey. Do all to obey. Child, I want you to go to school. That is good. It's a good thing. Child, I want you to brush your mouth. That is fine. Your mother says, go and wash the clothes. Go and wash your clothes. Go and take bath. These things are okay. Why are you resisting? Oh, go and buy me uh, some provisions. For the house use. Go, please clean up this place. Bring some water. What is wrong with this? So, I give you good doctrines. When they give you good things. Though it may be hard for you. It may be difficult, but there's good beside it. There's good behind it. Go for it. Obey. God wants you to be instructed. So, do it. In chapter 5 of Proverbs verse 1 and 2 My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. My son, attend to my wisdom. I am wiser than you. I have lived in this world before you longer than you and I've been experienced I've been exposed in this world I know the way to the way that will end badly the way that will end up well so that's why I'm instructing you don't do that this don't follow bad friends they will confuse your life no my daughter, don't be looking for marriage now. How old are you that you are thinking of marriage? You have to go to school. Stop boyfriends and girlfriends. My boys, stop boyfriend and girlfriend. As I see you now, in the next 20 years, you are not yet going to marry. You are going to pursue education. So what are you keeping a girl for? That after a little while, she has lost her beauty for all age. You want to change her as you change clothes. Leave this. Your time to marry has not come. However beautiful you think this one is, when the time to marry comes, you'll find the latest beauty. Leave this one. Or whatever you say, oh, I want this one is educated. Go forward. As you increase your val in value, you will also find increased women too in the society at that time. God will always give you the best. So forget this. That is counsel. The Bible says, obey your parents. Don't resist them. Don't frown your, your eyes or your face. Otherwise, what shall happen to you if you resist them? Verse 7. Hear me now therefore, 
O ye children, and depart not from the weights of my mouth. Verse 9. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. If you refuse what I'm saying, the future will tell. Opportunities of greatness shall be lost. You become the least among your mates. You become the least. You become a cleaner in the office of your mates, your age mates. You become a beggar among your brethren. If you refuse this thing I am saying, then in verse, in verse uh, 10, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. You are in school now. How old are you? You are 18. And you start keeping boyfriend. All the money or keeping girlfriend, all the money your parents give you, you are sharing it. The money for your upkeep, you share it because you have a girlfriend. You, strangers be filled with your world. That which is for your good to succeed now, you hurt yourself, it may affect your success. Or else, you ruin it, your life completely. So please, and then what says in verse 11, and thou mourn at the last. When thy flesh and thy bosom, body are consumed, and thou mourn at last. You, you couldn't advance, you have become pregnant on the way. You went to abort, and it has destroyed your womb. And thou mourn at last, and say, how have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof. My parents were telling me what was right. I refused. My heart hardened against all my father was saying, all my mother was saying, see me now. It's surely going to come on you. If you take the course of disobedience, children, obey your father and your mother. Obey them. And have, verse 13, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor incline my ear to them that instructed me. You will regret even the counsel of your elder brother, who loves you, elder sister, who loves you, guidance, who loves you, uh, uh, who loves you and is giving you counsel now. If you don't take it, regret is surely coming tomorrow. Children, obey your parents. Yes, because if you love Jesus, he has called you to a school of obedience. Thank God you started young in Christ. You started young to train your heart on obedience when you are still young. You have entered into the school early, school of obedience. Because you love Jesus, obey your parents. Submit yourself to them. Yes. Obey your guidance. Obey your teachers that are teaching you and those guiding you on the, the right way of life. Submit to them. So you can see, area of obedience, children to their parents, to their teachers in school, to their guidance, to their helpers. Obey. This is the life that will bless you tomorrow. It tells us that you are going to have a sure, bright future and that it will be well with you. That is what the word of God is saying. But he has told you, not in matters that will destroy your life. Not when your father is giving you a bad counsel. Go and fight that boy. Go and fight him. I am here. I will, I, I, I will, I will defend you. Let him come now. Fight him. Go and hit him. Maybe it's even your fellow brother. Go and hit him. I'm here. Don't listen to those counsel. They are not from the Lord. Obedience must be in matters that God is well pleasing with. Not in evil things. Not in stubbornness. No. 
Not to go and steal. Go and steal that and bring. Don't obey in that matter. That's not in the Lord. Don't go and uh, do this. Or else, go and marry that woman. I want you to marry that woman. Is she a believer? Is she a child of God? Why are you saying my father said I, he needs the woman? Oh, my mother said is that woman he wants, she wants. Does God accept it? You will obey God rather than your father. You will obey God. Obey Jesus. Obey the word of God rather than your parents. Rather than your teachers. That is what the Bible is telling us. Now, number two. Wives, obey your husbands. Wives, obey your husbands. In Ephesians chapter 5, Verse 22 to 24. Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Is in Ephesians, it is said, as fit in the Lord. Here, that's concerning children. Here to the wife, as unto the Lord. Which means the instruction of your husband, the demands of your husband should be the type God will demand of you. Which is in righteousness. Which is in truth. Which is in purity. Because you're not obeying him for his sake. You're obeying him for the Lord's sake. And if it is for the Lord's sake, it must be in righteousness. It must be in truth. It must be to the glory of the Lord. It is something that will make you well-pleasing to God. Because you are in a school of obedience as a child of God. You are an obedient child. Therefore, you cannot waste your obedience on man which has nothing to do with God. You can't, it's a waste. You're wasting precious things where you will not be rewarded but judged. So, as unto the Lord, which therefore means if your husband wants something that the Lord will not want you to give, the Lord will not want you to do, don't do it. Because that obedience, God will not be pleased with it. He created you for obedience. You failed as a sinner. Because sinful women obey their husbands even to evil. They obey their husbands. In fact, even to walking against God. When their husbands tell them, don't go to church, they don't go to church. Dress in pants, trousers, they go into it because it's what my husband is looking for. Those are sinful women. Sinful women. Their husband do, the husbands do whatever they want to do with them. Turn your annals for me. They turn. Why? They are sinful women. They don't know God. They were created for obedience, but because they are sinners, they don't obey God. They submit obedience to man. They submit obedience to demons. They submit obedience to ungodly things. But now you are recreated in Christ Jesus. Unto obedience. But the obedience now is to God. Therefore, your obedience to your husband must be as unto the Lord. It's because of the Lord. It's for the sake of the Lord. You are obeying your husband. Then it does not re demand the qualification of your husband. It does not demand. Because you, obeying God does not require qualification of anything. Qualification of an institution. Qualification of an organization. 
qualification of what? Or they must please you first. No. It's not you. It's God. You're doing it for the Lord's sake. So Joseph told his brethren, Am I in the place of God? You would aim to do evil against me, but God has done it for good. As for me, far be it that I should do evil against you. I'm going to nourish you. I'm going to care for you. Why? See what God has done. And God has given me this grace. I'm going to do it for you. Not for your good. You thought to do evil against me. So not because your husband is good. In fact, he might even be planning evil against you. But because you have been called to a new life, you have been enrolled in a school of obedience, the man will enjoy it. The practical you do in that school, the school of catering, you fry some, some cakes, you make some cakes, you cook some food, and the people that are around will eat free. Because the school you are in goes in, into practice, practicals, to make cakes, to make this, to make that, not really for sale. But the people that are around eat and be happy. They have made another one. They have made another one. Every come and take. You are doing this thing because you are in a school. This obedience is the practicals in the school. Your husband is eating free. Not because he qualifies. Not because he has money to buy. But because he happens to be around you. And the sweet smelling savor will not only go to God, but to him too that is in the environment. If you pollute the air, will he not smell the rotten air? He will smell the rotten air. If you disobey God, man will suffer it with you because it's in your environment. So similarly, if you have a sweet-smelling savor, just as Paul said of the Philippians, not only God will smell it and be happy, even Paul too was smelling it and was unhappy. So let your husband smell your good life, your obedient life, and be happy. So that's why you will not say, no, you're not doing me good. No, you are not qualified for me. No, no. You are doing practical. He happens to be living around that place. If nobody eats it, why, will you want to waste those things you produce? That is a wasted thing. Obey your husband. You're doing it for God, but let him have his, enjoy it. That is what the word of God is saying. Obey your husband in everything. Yes. For the husband is the head of the wife. Recognize this. Recognize this. Some of you will not even allow your husband to speak. He wants to speak, you take over. You want to speak, you take over. You want, he wants to speak, he is frustrated. How is he the head? He's supposed to be the one commanding the talk. You should give him his chance to speak too. The husband is the head of the wife. The vehicle has a head and it has a tail. How many, how, when did you see a vehicle re reversing and traveling for, uh, for 50 kilometers with reversing backward, backward, backward? Can it travel 50 kilometers? Reverse is just for a little while because you want to turn and face a direction, but it is the head that will face that direction. Then the tail follows. Always make your husband the leader. You will receive the blessing of creation. You will receive the beauty of creation that puts headship in your husband. If for any reason you are coming up to, as if to lead, it's your balancing to put him in the leadership as a vehicle reversing. But how do you take over that? You go by reverse from here to Calabar. <laughs> will you reach? From here, you're going to Lagos with reverse. Will you reach? That is what I'm saying. Take over that leadership. You will not reach heaven. You will not reach there. The husband is the head of the wife. But this head is very slow. But when it balances, it will be faster than the tail. 
Take your time to do the reverse. Take your time to do the reverse. But by the time the head faces the road properly, it will be more than the reverse. The speed will go very fast. And you will reach your destination. Take time to train that man to take the lead. Take time to allow that man, to encourage that man to take the lead. When he takes the lead, you will reach your destination in a short time. Why are you managing in a reverse? Your neck will pain you. Because some will have to look back with their neck. Where will you reach? How will you control the people coming behind you? Very often you will stop. So, follow scripture. For your husband, the husband is the head of the wife. That's what the scripture is saying. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Even as Christ also is the head of the church. That's what scripture is saying. Follow it. Obey this. Submit to this. Your life will be wonderful for you. Life will be blessed for you. As Christ is the one leading the church. Let Christ leave the church. Where can it go? We submit to him. We pray for his will. If it has not revealed it, we wait. But many women charge their husband for being too sluggish. You are too slow for me. Wait. Wait. They shall not be ashamed that wait for me. It is not in your... Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? It's not for you to know the times and the seasons that God has put in his own, in his own hand. Why are you too much in haste? Wait for your husband. Pray that God will increase his speed. Pray. Because the matter lies in his hand. This matter belongs unto your husband. You have to wait. Look at it, the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 10. We read verse 4. Ezra. Chapter 10. Yes, verse 4. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. This is a wife telling the husband, Come, when a snake enters into your room, who will kill the snake? Eh, woman. What if your husband was sleeping at that time? Will you not say, well, my husband is sleeping, leave, I will kill this thing. <laughs> you will go and wake up that man. I say, stand up. Sinek has entered into this house. If I say, arise, Sinek has entered into this house. But what about you? You wouldn't kill it? You say, this, is, this matter belongs to a man. So it is in killing Sinek. <laughs> you go and call your husband and be saying, wake up, wake up. But in other matters of family, he's too slow for you. You will go forward. Apply the same formula. The husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ also is the head of the church. And as the church waits on Christ, waits for Christ to move, before they move, learn to wait for your husband. Learn. When the wind was boisterous, over the disciples, they went to wake up Christ. I said, Carest thou not that we perish? Because the power belongs to him. Many things are put in the hand of that man that you are overlooking to the harm of the family. You're running forward. You're running like, I think, like Ahimas. You run fast, but you don't have the message. 
You don't have the message because God didn't give it to you. He knows you can run. He knows Aaron can speak, but he didn't give the, the leadership to Aaron. He puts it in Moses, which is, who even testifies that he is slow of speech. Who even testifies that he is he's stammering. I'm saying this so that you wait and learn to culture your husband, learn to encourage. These people say, rise, this matter belongs to you. We also will back you up. You are in the backing up position. The husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ also is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. He is the one that will rescue that house from Satan. Satan seems not to respect women because he feels it's easy to win them up. In the garden, he went to the woman. He didn't come to Adam. Adam would blow him. Adam would kick him down. So, if you want salvation of that house, how much particular am I speaking to husband and wives in Christ? Husbands and wives in Christ, you're despising your husband who has the treasure of grace. Who is rightly commissioned? No. What happens, my brethren, when a vehicle is moving and you see one of the tires ahead of the vehicle? What has happened? Eh? Accident. In accidental family, the wife is the leader. When you see the wife as the leader, accident, one of the tires has pulled out. You must go slow and be pray, God, let the vehicle stop slow. God help. God help. Otherwise, there will be some assaulting. So don't take and go off in the lead. Learn to wait for your husband. The Lord direct you in Jesus' name. It goes on to say, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In everything. Wives' obedience should be selfless. In selflessness. Don't regard yourself. Don't magnify yourself. Don't upgrade yourself. Don't give undue importance to yourself. Don't respond to human praise that comes over your life, even above your husband. Don't do that. Take care of yourself. Wife's obedience should be sacrificial. It pains, but go ahead. It's disturbing, but go ahead. He's your head. He's your leader. He's the commander in the field. He's the commander. He's the one leading in the, in the long trek. If he has not stopped, don't stop. Move and go. Bear the pain. Bear the embarrassment. Don't seek yourself, as I've said. Bear the embarrassment. It's costly, but do it the reward will be equally valuable as the cost is or more than it. Yes, your obedience should be in service. Render service of obedience. If you're not eating, cook for him because he needs the food. If you're not sleeping, allow him sleep because he needs the silence. Yes, and obedience Require spirituality of the wife. Be spiritual. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. If you are not spiritual, you cannot cope up with a husband. You cannot cope up with a perfect husband. Why? It's too perfect for you. 
is demanding this, is demanding this, and your flesh cannot do it. How do you carry a fat woman to run 440? How can, but you, the man is slim and is able to do it, but how do you carry a heavy person like that? It will not work. Except you also discipline your flesh, curtail yourself you won't be able to match up with a smart man who can run from here 10 kilometers and come back in the next three hours. He has run and come back. Yours, it will take you how many days? Because you are not together, but match up spiritually so that you think the same way. So that those things that bother you in the flesh will not bother you. This will require the wife's sanctification of heart. The Lord sanctify you holy, that you be blameless. Seek the sanctification of your heart so that you be blameless. And of course, it requires strong prayer life. Strong prayer life. Live in prayer. Ask grace. Ask for help. Otherwise, you will live your life murmuring. You will see the environment unconducive. You will see the environment harsh. Yes, it's harsh to the place, to the flesh. You're not used to this type of environment. So you, you cannot, you won't enjoy it. You want to sleep more. But this man, by 5 a.m., is up. I say, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. Say, eh? What's the time? 5 a.m. Allow me to sleep. But to him, he has woken up. So, learn spirituality. Come up to it. Purity of your heart, sanctification of your heart. Get at it. Yes. Otherwise, it will be worse if you have unbelieving husband. And yet, the Lord demands submission to the unbelieving husbands in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 I read from verse 1 the Bible says 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 1 likewise ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the world they also may without the world be won by the conversation of the wives Conversation is a lifestyle, manner of behavior. Submit to your own husbands, even the one that does not believe. Come here. The one that does not believe can give hard instruction. In fact, he may not feel. Ask God to help you. To meet up with him. For when must there be quarrels all the time? You may be justified to say, how can somebody demand this? Come, the magicians of, of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar were not justified. Even when the king said, tell me the dream I have dreamed. And then give me the interpretation of the dream. Otherwise, I'm going to kill you. They said, we have not heard of any king anywhere that can give his own magicians, his own wise men, this thing that you have said, will God justify them? There's a man among you that can do it. That man is the one that seeks my help. Have you come to me? King of Israel, when the king of Syria wrote a letter to Naaman, to say, take this letter to the king of Israel, and when he collected the letter, he said, as this letter comes to you, I have sent along with this letter, Naaman, captain of my army, recover him of his leprosy. The man said, Kai, can you see the trouble he's looking for? Can you see this trouble? Who am I? Am I God? That can repro repro recover a man from his leprosy? Look at trouble that he's looking for me now. He's looking, he's looking for trouble with me so that he will now organize war against me. Elisha had it and said, tell him to come here. It's God that sent him. It can be done. Everybody say, it can be done. Was he not done? Was not a, a, the name recovered of his leprosy in Samaria? 
in Israel. I say the Lord may look hard, but ask grace. Instead of sitting down and murmuring, hey, look at what my husband is demanding. Is it possible? Is, is it not because he's looking for trouble? Is it because he wants to be... ask God? He will give you grace. You will do it. And when you do it, hey, the gifts that he will, your husband will unload for you, the love that your husband will pour for you will be equal to and above the cost of obedience. Yes. So that's what the word of God is saying. Submit to your husband, even the unbelievers. But remember, as unto the Lord, not in matters of sin. My husband said I should wear earring. He wants it. My husband said I should wear mini pants or mini skirt, tight fitting skirt. He wants it. My husband said I should dress my hair, demonic, put, hair, put on the hair of various animals. Various skins. My husband said I should put the eyes of cat into my eyes. My husband, your husband is not God. If Nebuchadnezzar, who has a heated fire, cannot succeed over the children of God to make them worship him, what does your husband have? That if, if you don't do it, this is what he's going to do that you will disobey God for your husband. So that's what the word of God is saying. Yes, wives, submit yourself to your own husbands in everything, but not the glory of God and, right, and his righteousness must be the purpose of your obedience. The glory of God and his righteousness must be the purpose of your obedience. What are you doing this thing for? What, why are you going to all costs to obey him for? Why are you denying yourself of your sleep, of your pleasure, of even of your money to render obedience to him for? It's because of God. You want him to praise God. Or others who hear of it to praise God. Because you want to be in the righteousness of God. That is why you are doing it. But where obedience will hurt the cause of God. Obedience will make you miss righteousness. You won't do it. He has no power to enforce it. It is no more a sweet smelling sever, but a rotting smell. Well, whether be it in money, in the submission of your body, in, in matters of children, in matters of anything, that God will no more be glorified. Your righteousness will be affected. Don't do it. Obey God rather than man and be ready to lose the marriage. And God will not allow you to lose the marriage except it will be to your favor. God will not allow you to lose the marriage. Don't fear slapping. By the time he slaps one, two, three, he's tired. The cobra vomits saliva three times and that's the end of saliva in his life, in his body, at that, at that instant. So be peaceful. Stand for God. Stand for righteousness. And don't feel that God is condemning you because you didn't do this. No, it will not glorify him. How will he condemn you? It will not give God glory. It will affect your own righteousness before God. How will God condemn you? No. Rather God will justify you before that man. God can punish that man for you. Because why does he want to turn you off from God? Why does he want to turn... Why does he want to replace God in your life? Stand for God. And be obedient to the ways of God. Now number three, servant. Obey your masters. Areas of obedience. Seven. Colossians chapter 3. We're saying number 3. Servants, o- servants, obey your masters. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 25. The Bible says, Servants, 
obey in all things your masters according to the flesh not with eye service as mean pleasers but in singleness of heart fearing God and what so ever ye do do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done and there is no respect of persons in this world there are masters and they are servants who serve under masters. They are mistress, mistresses, and they are maids serving under mistress. God demands those who are servants to Christ, who have gotten salvation in Christ, to demonstrate obedience. To their masters they are to be humble and sincere in service to their masters masters according to the flesh whether they be believers or unbelievers that is what God wants you he says servants here is talking to Christian servants Remember, you were created by God for obedience, as I told you from the beginning. But you couldn't do it. So those people, servants who are in sin, cannot obey. What do they do? They obey their masters by eye service. Before their masters, they demonstrate real obedience. But it's not true. It's not true. They behave like a tube that you can stretch it. If you are stretching it, it goes with you. But when you stop stretching, it comes back to its normal end. So that's how they behave. When they see their masters, ah, oh, they increase in activity. They increase in humility. They increase in nice words. They increase in nice character. But when their masters are not there, they return to normalcy. That is how they behave in the world. They are unfaithful. They hide the gains of their master. Gehazi, we never knew he had backslidden. He ran after Naaman to collect that which the master said no. They do extra business in the master's business. They do extra business in the master's business. In the shop, they have their own customers. Some of them buy their goods and put it in another shop. So when a customer comes to buy, what are you looking for? Okay, let me go and bring it from another shop. He's going to bring his own, which he has put in this other shop. Although he will tell you, I'm going to collect from another person. It is his own that he has put there. And he's going to bring it to sell to you. He may have it in the store, he may, not even, he may not have it, but he has another which he has put somewhere. This is their wisdom. They cannot be humble. They cannot be selfless. They cannot unlove money. The love of money is in their heart. They cannot be patient to wait for their time. They cannot be sacrificial. They need gain. And now, they are hasty. They are in haste. To me gain. That is what is happening in the world. But for you, 
you were recreated in Christ Jesus to come back to obedience for purpose of obedience. Therefore, be faithful to your master. Obey your master. You are called for the business of your master. Do that business. Don't do your own. Otherwise, make your own open to see whether your master will accept the matter or not. Make it open. That which is done in darkness is of the devil. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He that feareth is sinned. That which is not done of faith is sin. You are afraid. That's why you didn't open it up to your master. You are afraid. If I go and tell him that he will discover me, I don't know what he will do. Then you are sinning. Don't do it. Don't do it. Submit to him. Obey him. Be faithful to him. As unto the Lord. As you are doing it. Does not God see? Elisha told Gehazi. When the man turned back again. And gave you those things. Did not my heart follow you? The Holy Ghost steered my heart. To follow you. I saw it in the realm of the spirit. You. What's the gain? You have 20 years to live more on earth. Why do you want to destroy it with, in one year? You have millions to gain in this life. Before you leave the earth. Why do you want hundreds or some few thousands to destroy you? Sinners are doing it. Should you do it? Now, you who are working with the church, it's even the church that employed you, which means God directly gets involved in your case, and yet you're doing private business. In the shop where you're selling, you buy your own. In the business the church is doing, you enroll yourself so that gain should come to you. You are, sinners are doing it. You are doing it also before God. You sneak out to do your own business. When the church pays you salary. Sinners are doing it because they are children of disobedience. Oh, so you are a sinner? So you are a sinner? That's why you are doing this business. You cannot be a sacrifice. You cannot be patient in poverty and in want waiting for when the Lord shall visit you you cannot be patient you are not a child of God but as obedient children you were doing those things before now that you have come to Christ don't do them again don't do them again obey in all things your masters according to the flesh your masters, obey them. Don't do it with eye service so that the leader should say, ah, this man is hardworking, but you are doing some private thing. Do you know that if you do 99% good and fail in one, you're guilty of all? What happens when just a little kerosene pours into your food? What happens to the food? Can you eat it again? It's contaminated with smell. Why do you contaminate your good service before God? We're seeing good, good, good. So you have a private thing you're doing that is corrupting your life because of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. While some haven't co coveted after, have pierced themselves with many sorrows. That is it. That is the word. Why do you allow money to corrupt you? Cry to God. Ask God for help to feed your family. Go and see leadership. Ask. See your leader. Pray that God should give him a kind heart for you. So that you don't need to defile yourself and go to hell on nothing. Yes. Not with eye service. As mean pleasers. But in singleness of heart. Fearing God. Do this work because of God with singleness of heart. 
We are treating you sincerely with singleness of heart. So you're not paying us good for our good. In singleness of heart, fear God. Do it for God's sake, whether man is there or not there. Don't sell any of this, the parts of our vehicle. And you have not taken authority from the leadership. Don't go into yourself and do anything. And you have not taken authority. You'll be sinning. It will cut short your time. It will block the future. So, that is what... We are serving before a righteous God. You play with him. Do you play with fire? Do you play with naked wire? Why are you so careless? Yes. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Do it with all your heart. Little thing you go to market to buy. You say, um, yes, they send me here, so I'm going to eat food now uh, because uh, they send me here. Does your conscience really show that you're hungry or because you want to play with money? Money has entered into your hand. You want to take advantage of it. Is it true that you're hungry? What stops you from eating at home before you go for that errand? Just because money has entered into you. Do you know that's abuse of God's money? Can you really tell sincerely to God that is that is required for you to use the money? Or you think the money has come? Why are you playing as if you don't know this God you're serving? Judge yourself well. He that judgeth himself shall be judged of no man. You are doing this work. You're busy you see, following the customers of your master to divert them to yourself. Now, you have established a, f- a telephone call. You know how to call them and provide the service for them separately to gain their money. Are you doing this thing before God? Gehazi, the leprosy of Naaman. Fear God. Fear God. But if you wait patiently, will not this God visit you? Does he not reward good works? Does he not reward labor of love? Does he not reward faithfulness? What did Joseph gain in the house of Potiphar? With all the good he did there. He left single with maybe a one cloth to the prison. What did he gain? The Lord has transferred the gain to the future when he shall gain the whole Egypt. But what if he destroyed it with immorality? He would have lost it. Don't destroy your future good by unfaithfulness. Don't behave like the children of Eli. No, give it to me uncooked. We don't, the priest will not wait for when you cook it. Give it to me now, now. If you don't give me, I will take it by force. Until they died. To obey with all your heart, with all patience, wait, be sincere and true. Have a clean record before God. Servants, obey, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. It is God that will give you the reward. Joseph's reward was realized in the throne of Egypt. What could he have gained in Potiphar's house if he was purloining? Still this God, go and keep. Stay. Will it have equal to the salary of the vice president of Egypt? The opportunities of the vice president of Egypt? What are you wasting your future good for? Is not equal to that which the Lord has said before you. For this service you are rendering. I has not seen, neither has the ears heard. What the Lord has prepared for the righteous. Play righteousness and see whether your tomorrow will be empty. God is not unrighteous to forget the, your labor of love. 
which you labor and are still laboring. It is from the Lord. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Do it faithfully. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Do it righteously. You are serving the Lord Christ in the house of God as a minister of the gospel, as a house leader, as a as, as a coordinator, as overseer, you are serving the Lord Christ. Do it perfectly. I served in a church, Deep Alive Bible Church, for 14 years as an overseer. Remove, forget about other service before I came to overseer. Perfect. No, I take money to myself. Don't say it. I've never used five thousand five naira. For myself, my conscience will not take it. Even if I travel, if anything happened that I must use five naira, I must come and pay it back. It's in my record. And I'm going to return it. See what the Lord has given me now. Can I compare it to anything there? Why are you wasting your future? Destroying your future. The reward that the Lord has for you cannot come. It's like the crown that the Lord gets ready to put it on you. Angel has already come, but you deny Christ. Be faithful. Be righteous. Knowing that of the Lord Christ, ye shall, of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Everybody say, I am serving the Lord Christ. Serve him faithfully. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he, do, he had done. And there's no respect of persons. Do wrong now, you will reap it. No respect of persons. No amount of fasting can change it. Except repentance with restitution. So don't do it. Yes. Yeah. Obedience. Know also that your good is in your obedience. Your blessing in life depends upon your obedience and faithfulness to your master. In the book of Genesis, chapter 16, verse 5, from verse 5 to 13, Genesis Chapter 16, from verse 5, the Bible says, And Sarah said, Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleased thee. And when Sarai dealt heartily with her, she fled from her, pray, from her face. Hagar was with Sarah as a maid. It's just because of the impatience of Sarah. Uh, God, has, God has not given me a child. Wait for the time. All things work together for good. To them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Including those things that look seemingly shameful. Seemingly evil. Seemingly bad. Seemingly disappointments. And whatever. They will all turn up tomorrow at the time of the Lord. When he finishes work, using all things to work out beauty for your life. You will see them dazzling as gold. There's this thing we call PLs. Costly thing called PLs. PLs, as it is said, is formed in uh, which, uh, what fish? In, the, in a particular fish in the sea. What happened? How does it get formed? When this fish what is the name of this fish? When this fish is wounded by sand or some other thing that wounded and produces womb, a wound in the body, to cover that wound and heal that wound, the body of that fish will begin to develop 
thick scale to cover the wound. And that thick scale that is being developed is, is what forms peers. It comes with beauty, glory, which as if God is saying, I will pay you for this wound that happened to your body. I'm going to make you glorious for this wound that happened to your body so that human beings will value you. They will seek for you. <laughs> Do you know that before you find a person like me, I was wounded? Where I was serving in deeper life, I was disciplined. I was put aside for one year, two months. After that, I was demoted by the way of rank. The Lord started developing peers in my life. That is that substance so beautiful, so glorious, so fantastic that you buy with a lot of money. Peers of great price. The kingdom of God is lacking unto a merchant that is seeking for goodly peers. And when he has found, he went and sold all to buy it. Goodly peers. It's like the kingdom of God is like a sinner that is looking for life, beauty of life, rest of life. And when he went and found it, where did he find this peer? It is in Jesus that was wounded on the cross. It was in the what? I, what scar? When he rose from the from the dead, what did he show the people? The scars of the body. That's the glory of the Savior. When you go to heaven, what are you going to show? The persecutions and the scars of the suffering you made for him on earth. So all things work together for good. Yes. All things will produce good in your life. So, see this lady now. Hagar. See it. Sarah, if you had stood well... See the child that is going to come. Are you going to compare that child with any child? Even this Ishmael had to give way because of the peel of great price coming to the delayed family. Yes, God comforts indeed. God comforts. Now, because Haggai became pregnant, she despised Sarah, adding to her suffering. Then Sarah now told Abraham, my sin be upon you. When I told you that you should marry my maid, Aga, why did you agree? You didn't know that you sinned? God said we should wait. I couldn't wait. <laughs> and I came to you and said you should marry. Why didn't you tell me that you, should not, you will not do it? Okay, see now. When the lady has become pregnant now, see, she, she's despising me. See it now. She's despising my life. Abraham said, do to her as you want. So, the Bible now tells us uh, in verse 5. And Sarah, um, uh, 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 verse 6 rather. But Abraham said unto Sarah, behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleased thee. And when Sarah dealt heartily with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness. By the fountain, by the fountain in the way to Shur, and said, and he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, you remain a maid. The fact that you got married to Sarah's husband doesn't remove you from being a maid. The fact that you got pregnant doesn't mean you are no more a maid. God knows that you are a maid. You think that God didn't know before He made you to serve that man to be a servant. Even as you are increasing in glory, you are increasing in wealth, you are a servant. God purposely meant that you should be a servant. He made you to be a servant. If you serve faithfully, the reward is there. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Knowing that it is of the Lord, you will be rewarded. Cyrus may, Cyrus, Cyrus may. That's what the angels called unto her. Queens comest down. Where are you coming from? Aga, 
Sarah's maid. And where are you going? Whither will thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress. You were stubborn. That's why that woman is dealing angrily with you. You were stubborn. That's why that man is frowning at you. You were stubborn. That is why you are facing what you are facing. If you were obedient, if you were doing all you were told to do, will you be suffering anger? Will you be suffering ill treatment? Will you be suffering the abuses? Will you be suffering humiliation? Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. It's because you couldn't submit, that's why you're suffering this thing. Who is it that will harm you if you are followers of that which is good? Do good and let me know who will be hurting you. Do good. Will not God reward you? And the angel of the Lord said unto her, and, and the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. The reward of the Lord over you is coming. Go and do that servanthood well. You people want to, you don't want to be a servant. I am, I am a married man already. How will you be treating me like this? And say, I should go. No, I can't sweep the ground. No, I can't fetch water. No, I can't. God make you to go and do it. If you, you can't do it for man, but do it for God. Do it for God. He put you in that school. He has not graduated you. If you finish, he that is faithful in that which is another man's, they will put into his hand that which will be his own. That is what the word of God is saying. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her, her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, unto her, Behold, thou art with child. There's, the blessing has already started. If you don't go back, you might have bought that child. Suffering will, and the hazards of tomorrow, which you don't know yet, may affect that child. Thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath had thy affliction. And he shall be a wild man. His son will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. So you see, and she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked, upon, looked after him that seeth me? Can you see Hagar, the privilege of bringing you to the man of God where you can easily see God? Go to another place. Let me see whether you see God there. It's because you are where God normally comes. That's why you have opportunity to see him. And you want to run away. Obey the Lord. Your blessing is in this. Now, obedience to civil authority. Obedience. To civil authority. In Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Titus chapter 3. I read verse 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse laws and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So tell them to obey authorities, obey leadership, obey the government. That's what the word of God says. Tell them to obey the government. The Lord wants his children to be faithful citizens and law-abiding wherever they are, that his name should not be blasphemed. Obeying constituted authority for morals and truth is righteousness before God. Obey constituted authority. In the book of Romans, chapter 13, Romans chapter 13 from verse 1. Let every soul from verse 1 to verse 7. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. That's, let every power, person be subject to the higher powers, to the government, constituted authority. The, the, the law of the organization. Let every soul submit to him, submit to it. These laws that are made for morals and truths, for peaceful coexistence of human beings. God is the owner of peace. He is the source of truth. So these laws have been enacted to cause peace well-being, social life, security, and all in the nation, in the organization, in the society. Obey them. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. He that is not ready to submit to the rule of the government the rule of the constitution, I mean the constituted authority in the, the rules of organization is resisting God. Because these things are for morals. They are for truth to cause coexistence, peace in the society. The police station is there. The court is there. These ones are there. The magistrates are there. This all said to put order we have various, the customs are there, the immigration is there, um, are there, and various people are there working together. And the nation has rules for us to obey. But if you refuse, you will be judged. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have the power. Have praise of the same. Rulers, the people set up to rule over us, they are not to bring evil to us, but they are for our peace. In every society, if there's any problem, you run to the ruler, you run to the police station, it is supposed to protect you. If somebody is cheating, you run to the court, the court is supposed to protect you and restore your right. All these things are done for your well being. Therefore, if you don't want to be afraid of policemen, do what is right. Why well, the police will even justify you? Don't be borrowing money and not paying. Police will force you to pay the owner. That is what he's saying. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. This, this uniformed men, this law courts, this constituted order in the society, organization, are meant to bring peace. In the schools, there are rules guiding life in the school. In the church, there are rules guiding Church, guiding the church, movement in the church. There are rules. Submit to them. 
Wherever you find yourself, there are rules. Rules, of course, it takes the, the carnal people, sinful people, make sinful laws. Don't obey those sinful laws. I will obey God rather than man. But rules put for moral, for truth, for well-being, obey them. For revenue, obey them. If you don't obey them, they have the power to judge you. For they are ministers of God, meant to bring peace and order to society. And if you resist them, they will judge you. Wherefore, we must Wherefore, we must needs be subject, not only for rod, but also for conscience sake. Not be, just because they will take you to police station, they will arrest you, but do it so that you can have a pure conscience before God. For in this cause, pay you tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Pay your tax. If you're supposed to be a taxpayer, don't, have, don't evade tax. It's God that said they should tax you. Get your driver's license. It is God that says they should have license, those who are driving, to protect those who come into driving recklessly and cause accidents and send people to hell or make people not to discharge their duty because they have broken their legs, they have done this because of, in, uh, because of untrained driving. Anybody can, that can just pick vehicle and start driving without proper learning. That's why it is men that have license, which means we have checked you, we know that you can drive. Follow it. Pay custom duty over your goods. Don't evade it. Don't give bribe to reduce it. It is God that put it there. It is God that put it there. Get your particulars. Get it. Write your exam well and have the real certificate. It is the work of God that puts that law there. That you must make it. Don't tell lies. Don't, go, don't climb the other side. Yes. That's what the Lord is saying. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. If you come to the house of a king, people are removing their shoes to enter. Why don't you remove your shoes? So no, child of God, minister of the gospel, I will have removing shoes here. It is the rule to give that man a sense of honor so that he can have that mind of ruling people well. It is the rule. Come, when they say all king live forever, it is the man going to live forever. <laughs> it's just a language. So there's nothing wrong for you to say, oh, king live forever, as they are saying. You hear me? God wants his children to be low abiding. Don't follow the other way. He that clambered the other way, the same is a thief and is a robber. In the book of First Peter, chapter 2, First Peter chapter 2, verse 12 to 17, the Bible says, Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak, e speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. If you do wrong and they are coming to arrest you, give your hand for them. If they want to put anchor on it, let them anchor you. You did wrong. Even if you don't do wrong and they have come for your arrest, submit yourself. You hear? Don't say, no, I'm a child of God. How will you be putting chain upon my hand? Me, I will be ashamed. I'm, I am a man of God. Man of God. 
when they come to arrest you, submit yourself. You hear? Jesus, your master, submitted. He came to John and John baptized me. John said, can I baptize you? Am I to be baptized by you? Or you are coming to me. He said, do it for righteousness sake. That your righteousness will want to obey constituted laws. If they charge you, pay. If you have done, if Paul said, if I have done anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. And go to heaven. That is it. That is the word of God. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free, not using your liberty for a clock of malicious, maliciousness, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. If police are stopping people on the way, why are you not stopping? Make sure your danger light is working, your signals are working, your license, your driver's license, your everything. Make sure you have national ID card. In fact, do all things well. Particulars, here is it. Triangle, here is it. Do you have a license? Take. You, do you remember this, uh, uh, what do we call it? This color tone? They do it, be alert, be ready for the rapture at all times. Don't behave like people who, they, who are stubborn to the constituted authority, to customs, to immigrations. Don't do it. You were born, you were created to obey. You felt as a sinner. You were recreated in Christ. Obey God. I'm going to handle the other one next Sunday about obedience to the church. Let's rise up upon our feet and thank the Lord for what the Lord has taught us. Obedient children. Children, obey your parents. Wives, obey your husbands. Servants, obey your masters. C citizens, obey constituted authority. Be humble. Keep obeying. Keep obeying. In the school, children, submit to rules. But not these illegal rules that would destroy the image of God in you. No, don't do it. Not Man must be under God. Where rules are making you to transgress against God, reject it. Mordecai refused to bow for Haman. The apostles refused to submit to the rule to the Sanhedrin. To the Sanhedrin. Why? Who obey God rather than man. But where God is interested for you to show the world your spirit, the kind of a man you are to the glory of God, do it. God give you grace in Jesus' name.